Colossal military disaster. We shall go on to the end. We shall never surrender. Dunkirk is the latest film from Christopher Nolan, director of blockbusters like The Dark Knight and Interstellar. He's tackled superheroes, dreams, and deep space. Well, now he's captured a pivotal moment from the Second World War, the crucial evacuation of British forces from Dunkirk in 1940. Our film critic Eli Glasner got to take in this epic film on IMAX, and he joins us now with his thoughts. How does this stack up against his other films? He's never really done anything like this before, and one of the reasons why is this time he is constrained by history. He is trying to do justice to this critical turning point, 1940. If Dunkirk didn't happen, the world could be different today. And But it feels as if, in approaching this, Nolan has decided to throw everything overboard that wasn't absolutely necessary. Backstory, forget about it. Famous characters, we don't need them. No relationships, no emotional baggage. As you see, this movie is pure predicament. We begin with the soldiers on the run, an army in retreat. The Germans are closing in and on the beaches of France, 400,000 men wait for deliverance. Take a look. The enemy tanks have stopped. Why? Why waste precious tanks when they can pick us off from the air like fish in a barrel? There are some stunning sequences in this, and if you have a chance to see it on IMAX, as I did, what you see is that endless line of soldiers standing there, shivering, soggy in their brown coats, and then they hear it. You can hear it now in the background, that high-pitched whine. And first, it's just a little speck in the sky, and then the speck gets closer and closer, and you see that line of soldiers, almost like dominoes, all crouch in amongst themselves, but there's nowhere to go. There is just the sand and the sky. It is remarkable. It is remarkable, and I guess that's why we care so much about this story. We see the humanity in it. How does he tackle it? He often plays with time, doesn't he? He does, exactly. You think of what he did in uh, uh, Inception, of course, that amazing plot that folds in in itself. And again, he's doing that where he's telling us the story in three different segments with three different time scales. So, for example, we begin with the war in the sky. Amazing sequences of aerial combat as we follow for one hour two British Spitfire pilots just trying Trying to keep those German dive bombers at bay, scanning that endless blue for some sign of the enemy. Then there's a day spent with a boat, that civilian fleet of boats, many of them just pleasure crafts who responded to the call. The Navy couldn't rescue the soldiers because it was too shallow. They couldn't get those warships in. And so remarkably, regular Brits, civilians respond, regular Brits like Mark Rylance as Mr. Dawson, a Brit, doing his duty with his son and a local boy in a sweater vest. Take a look. The call went out. We have to go to Dunkirk. Ready on the stern line. What are you doing? You know where we're going. Into war, George. I'll be useful, sir. What about? I mean, Rylance is just remarkable. He's like the moral center of this film. And then there's one other segment. We spend a week with those soldiers, those men just trying to get home, to get off that beach, doing whatever they can, carrying the wounded, floating out on a wrecked ship, doing what they can. Now, Harry Styles is one of those soldiers, big pop star, big deal that he was in this film. I can't tell you his name because I didn't even pick it up because it's not important. Nolan is focused purely on the mechanics of the situation. There are soldiers, there are planes, there are boats, there is water, and somewhere on the other side is home. That sounds like such a cold treatment, but as you show us just these few clips, like I've already got tears in my eyes, I've got goosebumps, I'm, I'm holding myself because it is so powerful, perhaps because we know it's based in history. Some are calling this one of the greatest war films ever. What do you think? I, I certainly think it deserves a spot on that list, but it is a war film unlike we've seen for a couple reasons. One, he shoots with such remarkable clarity, shooting on IMAX cameras, the screen filled with those images. He put 
cameras on those planes flying over the water. So we've never really seen some of these scenes, but also you talk about war films. This is an amazing, epic story, but it's also a personal story. And there is an intimacy. So we are there with the soldiers in the sand. We are there in the cockpit of a slowly sinking plane. We are there in the ships as the soldiers struggle to get to safety. And so it, it's a very different scale and way of telling the story that I think is focused on the humanity and perhaps one of the most remarkable things. It's not necessarily about the courage. It's not necessarily about the heroics. It is about survival. That is what this movie is about. But that, in a way, is its own victory, certainly a victory for film fans. Four and a half stars out of five.